Hi, Jim. Can't, can't see you from over there. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. First Sunday in October, Worldwide Communion. The time is running very quickly this fall. Someone said, shh. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome you to our service today. A few announcements as we begin. Uh, first, a thank you to all who made last week's celebration possible, celebration of our uh, becoming an affirming congregation. Uh, there were a number of people involved in the worship planning team, on the banner making, banner design team, uh, the people who helped us with snacks and lunch, all the people who were part of the process, and the speakers. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Zach, who's here today, and Jan. Uh, Dave is not, and Amy, of course, is in Peterborough, but uh, you folks helped make that it really meaningful for us, so I want to extend our thanks. Thank you for I was very happy to do so. Um, little note, we did have a celebration coffee time last week after service. We had some folks who were doing it. We don't have coffee hosts today, so there's no coffee today. However, we do have coffee hosts for next week, so we will be having coffee after the service next week. Right? It's probably going to be a week-to-week -week thing, again, depending on how our volunteers shake out. But it's part of this starting up again, you know, little bits at a time. So no coffee this week, but we will see you for it next week. Today is Worldwide Communion, and so um, we join with churches all over the world who uh, celebrate at the table, some in different ways than us, but many of them you would recognize the pieces. So process for us, we are uh, still um, working through our COVID cups. So uh, what you need to do before we get to communion is find some of these in the pew ahead of you. Uh, the deal with these is there are, you have to be careful, there are two tags here, right? So you want the little purple one at the beginning, don't open them yet, but you want the little purple one at the beginning, which is where you're gonna get the piece of bread, and then the larger one is secondary. As for the young people, yours are gonna be taken down to you, and you'll be serving, you'll be served communion as part of the children's church. So you don't have to worry about that particular thing. So make sure you have some in front of you. Anyone, of course, who wanted to bring their own elements from home, you're more than welcome. You consider those elements to be part of our broader blessing. Next week's service is uh, the celebration of Thanksgiving, and also we're so happy to celebrate baptism, so uh, that'll be exciting next week. And then on the 23rd, we'll have another baptism. Uh, because we had a few to get through and we wanted to make sure we had lots of room for everybody. And I see that Isla's here. So Isla, we're gonna be baptizing on October 23rd. So that's pretty exciting. On the 16th, also we have a guest. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> so as you can see, Aaron's first Sunday back. <laughs> um, uh, and I know that everyone's going to want to say hi to him, but we're just going to ask that you, uh, you know, it's not just a COVID issue, it's the fact that it's been a long time since we've been out in public, right? So there's lots of germs, so just uh, wave. <laughs> Friends, we acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, and culture 
of the peoples with whom the Upper Canada Treaties were signed and our responsibility as treaty members. We are gathered on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek peoples. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. Even in the midst of shadows, the light does not cease to shine. We gather as members of Georgian Shores United Church to pray, to praise, and to remember. We gather in solidarity with Christians of every continent, Christians of many denominations. We gather as disciples of Jesus Christ to hear the words of truth, compassion, and justice. We gather in the tradition of the saints to be strengthened and to serve faithfully. We are one. Please join me in our opening prayer, which is responsive. 
Loving God, we thank you for everything which joins us together as church. Loving God, we thank you for this faith communion, community and for our membership in the wider Church of Jesus Christ. Our links with other city, town, churches, the joy we find in our own congregation, and our contacts with the global church. Through your Holy Spirit, O oh God, our time for conversation with the younger members. So if any of them would like to join me. You guys are going to come and see me? <laughs> they're, sorry, they're busy. Uh, we had some stuff in the uh, busy bins today that was kind of interesting. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I got my helper here. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to leave this off because of my microphone. But since you guys got yours on, I'm cool. Do you want to come over on this side, Liam, maybe? Okay, so I have a few things that I want to show you and ask you about today. Oh, this is mixing spoon okay we have a mixing bowl and this doesn't go in there it goes behind and i have some things that i'm going to ask you these are ingredients for something it's not they're not the right amounts right it's just to give you an idea so we're going to figure out what these things are so what do you think that is some kind of powder maybe salt what's that Flour. What do you guys think it might be? Flour. So feel it. Feel how soft it is. Okay. Elijah, you want to feel it? Feel it? No? Okay. You just look. It's very soft. It's soft though, right? Flour soft. Okay. So what then, what do you think this is? Yeah, okay, so salt or sugar, feel it and see if you can think what it might be. What do you think it is? Yeah, so feel that. Yeah, I think it's salt. Salt, okay. What about this one? That's sugar. That's sugar? Yeah, you think so? Okay, so everybody out there, I've got flour, I've got salt, I've got sugar. What is this? Seeds. Oh, it looks like seeds. You know what that is? Do you know what that is? You guys guess what that is? This is yeast. So, uh, <laughs> this is a, yeast is a kind of fungus, which is kind of a funny thing because we think of when we think of that, we think of things that are yucky. But this is actually something that we use in um, cooking. Okay, in baking. You also use it. You also use uh, fungus in making beer for those adults who are out there. <laughs> but anyway, so yeast. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think these would be the ingredients for? I don't know, baking, something. baking something. What kind of something? You, know, you can bake lots of things. You can bake lots of things. But what do you think I might be talking about today? Bread. With a big bread. Yeah. So what other things would I have to have to make bread? Do you think? Not necessarily. You can't eat bread milk. Yeah, well, how about um, you would make, uh, you would use warm water. Yeah. You know why? Because warm water helps the yeast yeah, activate. There you go. Yeah, the, see? See, he's talking about when he made pretzels, that is, when he makes pretzels, he has to make the yeast, yeast bloom. 
So there you go. So warm water, a bit of oil. And then at some point, if, you, if you're having bread with yeast that rises, you have to call knead it. You have to kind of punch it back down. It gets big and you have to punch it back down. Do you know why you do that? To make the dough not so sticky. But you know what, what happens when you're doing that? It, 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 in, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, but it, it brings air in. First, there's a chemical reaction and it releases carbon dioxide and all of that. But anyway, we won't worry about that. But the idea is it brings air in. So the thing about, yeah, so the thing about bread that's really cool is you've got wheat from the flour that comes from the land, right? You've got water, the warm water that activates the yeast, and you've got all this air coming into the bread. So you have like parts of the world. The other thing that makes bread a really good um, symbol for us coming together as a community, what do you think the wheat, this came from wheat, Liam, what do you think the wheat looked like before it got ground all up? Yeah, well, I have a picture. Sorry, excuse us for a minute while I use the dreaded iPhone. But here, so there's a picture. This is after, in the, in the summertime, it would be green, but then it gets to fall, it turns golden. See? And then, when you harvest, this is what it looks like before you grind it up. Okay? You grind it all up, you get the shells that are there out of, off of it. The, like the external part, and you grind it up, and it looks like this. Or if it was whole wheat, if it didn't go through as much processing, it would look a little more brown. But the idea is, is that wheat is something that you bring in, bring in from the fields, you grind it all up, and it's, the idea of it is, it, it reminds us, it's a symbol of us as a people, that we're brought in from all the corners of the earth, right? And we're brought together in one loaf. So that's why we have the symbol of the bread up there from all over the world, all the different kinds, brought in together, all for individuals, all over the place, out there, other churches, and we're brought all together as one. So in addition to the whole thing of Jesus' teaching, it's a really important symbol for worldwide communion. So if you want to go home today and make pretzels, it's a good thing to do on Worldwide Communion Day. Make yep, make bread. Okay, so before we go downstairs where you're going to be talking about that and some other things, a couple of things I just wanted to check in with you about. For real? Oh, that's okay. He's not used to being up here because we haven't been for a while. So he'll, he'll, he'll get it as we go. Um, Roy sent these. Liam, Roy sent this. Change the world. Do you want to run that over and put it in the, the orange little bucket that's over there for change the world? Uh, he asked us if we were still doing it. I said, yes. We don't collect it the same way, but we still do it. And then the last thing is, before we sing, we're going to sing a song about, um, about bread, I think. What are we singing, Jim? All the longer, oh, all the longer we are. <laughs> so let's have a prayer before we do that. Thank you, God, for this day, for the beautiful sunshine, and for the bread that reminds us that we all come together as one. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to sing, and then I'm going to give you your uh, candle to take down, and someone's going to take communion down to you when the time comes, all right? Okay, let's sing together. And you can uh, stay seated for this one.
So Liam, Liam, do you want to take the candle? Okay, so you guys can head down to Children's Church. Sunday of the church year, uh, there is a lectionary for it. So four particular readings from scripture that are picked out to be the readings for that particular day, with the idea that through the three years of the lectionary cycle, A, B, and C, you would read or hear uh, most of the significant stories of our faith. Now, the interesting thing about that is, of course, because there are four readings each week, usually we only end up doing two. Um, the two are focused on today are from the epistle and the gospel, but I did want to mention the reading from Lamentations, that is one of the, of the four. Lamentations 1, 1 to 6. And I need you to just keep that in the back of your mind because it introduces an image of the city as a bereaved woman, isolated, grieving, vulnerable, and dependent on her conquerors. So that image kind of plays into some of the rest of the reading, so uh, just sort of hold that thought. The image of the city as a bereaved woman, isolated, grieving, vulnerable, and dependent on her conquerors. Okay? So hold that in your thoughts, and then we're going to turn to the epistle, which is from 2 Timothy, verses one, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. So in this, Paul is writing from a Roman prison from which he does not expect to be released. He testifies to the gospel message he has long proclaimed and appeals to Timothy to continue that proclamation. So you'll hear a bit more about this reading later on in the reflection. But let's hear this reading from 2 Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel in the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. And this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I am sure that he is able to guard the deposit I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me. In the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus, guard the good deposit entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Amen. 
And we read also in the gospel, this is from Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 5 to 10. Um, you can, it's a short reading, but you can easily get a bit lost in it. <laughs> so I want to just give you a, something to hook on to. This is about the theme of uh, remaining faithful through hardship. Um, as is often the case in Luke, the disciples provide a great teaching moment to illustrate his message. So after hearing all kinds of stories, the disciples have been listening to stories about uh, things that lift up the poor, the small, the sick, and the humble. So what did the disciples do? Well, they turn around and ask, demand, in fact, an increase in their faith. It's a kind of missed the point thing, right? Um, so Jesus responds in frustration, uh, perhaps at their self-focus, perhaps at their lack of understanding. Um, the, the illustration or, that he uses or the piece that he uses will sort of make you go like this, saying, Jesus said that? But what he's telling the disciples is that uh, then and now, even a small amount of faith with God will be enough. So, so listen to these words then from Luke 17. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you rather not say to him, prepare supper for me, Put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, and later you may eat and drink? Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. May God bless to our understanding these readings from Scripture. Let us pray. God, grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It is a curious thing each week to see what the lectionary puts before you and then to try to figure out how the lectionary meets the community in which you serve. So we do have lots of different kinds of resources that we can turn to, uh, commentaries, uh, worship preparation guidelines, but often specific events in the community and the world take us in a direction which is different from the suggestions, and that's okay. Let's us meet the needs of our own particular people, place us in the broader world, and uh, to be creative in our understanding. But this week, I found that the information presented in our worship, one of our worship planning resources, Seasons of the Spirit, was really enriching to my faith and to my understanding. And so I'd like to acknowledge Seasons of the Spirit and tell you that uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, several parts of the commentary with you. And I hope that you also find it uh, helpful and enriching. <clears throat> this week's readings, the two that we read and also the one from Lamentations, they illuminate a living faith from age to age and grief to grief. Through the tears of a captive Jerusalem likened to a widow in mourning, to the tears of Paul in prison, recalling his joy in his protege's faith, a faith nurtured in community, a faith that will go on. Certainly there are circumstances that are unique to each age, but there is a commonality of experience portrayed in these readings, a commonality of experience with which we live. Lamentation, grief, doubt, shattered hope. In the midst of these proclamations of faith and testimony, and in the midst of these are proclamations of faith and testimony to the remembrance of a loving and merciful God. In the long history of faith, empires come and empires go, crushing and threatening. But this is the word for you to remember today. They cannot extinguish the flame of love and hope that is passed from hand to hand in the shadows. 
Rekindling faith is a sacred task that belongs to all of us, for we are its inheritors. Like Timothy from his mother and his grandmother, we are its inheritors. In 2 Timothy, the reading from today, Paul, writing from prison, um, he testifies to a gospel message he has long proclaimed. Paul laments many things in that reading. He laments, really, through the, the, the pieces of the writing to Timothy, he laments followers that have deserted him. He laments his awareness of an ongoing conflict with the larger church. Uh, his knowledge of the fact that people are turning away from the faith. And yet, despite all the sorrows, Paul demonstrates remarkable calm in the face of impending death. Affirming his calling as an apostle and a leader and a teacher, Paul calls on Timothy to carry on his legacy, urging him as a leader in the church to rekindle his faith by trusting and relying on the spiritual heritage gifted to him by his biological family, his mother and grandmother, by his family of faith, and even by Paul himself. Well, probably a little piece to tell you here that uh, I do note that scholars actually debate this uh, letter's origin. Um, some expect, accept that it was authored directly by Paul, but the three, let three letters known as the pastoral epistles, which are First and Second Timothy and Titus, they differ enough in language from Paul's other letters that sometimes um, the suggestion is that one of Paul's disciples wrote it while he was close to the end of his life, or perhaps a generation later, uh, responding to church conflict and invoking Paul's authority. Regardless, the author intends to communicate to leaders a call to remain faithful to a tradition that they have received and to demonstrate the faith by passing it on. So this week's readings remind us that faith grows in community. And they speak to us in a time when we see so many of our communities shattered by uh, Fiona and Ian and by fires and all of the natural disasters that are surrounding us and then in the larger world, war, famine. Faith grows in community, it reminds us. One generation passes the knowledge of God's grace on to the next, and a faithful community both remembers its heritage and honors its future legacy. So, as I said earlier, there are circumstances unique to each age, but a commonality of experience, lamentation, grief, doubt, and shattered hope. And we see these in our families and our friends on the East Coast our family south of the border, we see lamentation, grief, doubt, shattered hope. But in the midst of these, we also see proclamations of faith and testimony to the remembrance of a loving and merciful God. And we see it so often in the way our community members react to and with one another lifting each other up and trying to find those small seeds of hope in the midst of their sorrow. In the 1997, so I'm going back a ways here, 1997 movie Paradise Road, don't know if any of you saw it, uh, women were held, held under brutal conditions in a Japanese prisoner of war camp in World War II, and they created a vocal orchestra. Their singing was an act of spiritual if not always physical, survival, which even had the power to move the emotions of their captors. The tagline for the movie, courage echoes forever. Lamentation, grief, doubt, shattered hope. And then, community, courage, persistence, hope, reborn. As we gather at table with our family throughout the world, many of whom are shattered, victims of Fiona and Ian, the hungry in Africa, 
the war weary of Ukraine, and so many whose stories we do not know. We see that same pattern. Lamentation, grief, doubt, shattered hope. And then community, courage, persistence, hope reborn. In the long list of history, as I mentioned before, empires come and empires go, disasters come and disasters go, crushing and threatening, but they cannot, they cannot extinguish the flame of love and hope that is passed from hand to hand in the shadows. Rekindling faith is a sacred task that belongs to all of us, and we are its inheritors. We gather in prayer, in song. We gather at table, understanding that within our community, courage and hope echo forever. Rekindling faith is a sacred task, and it belongs to all of us, for we are its inheritors. We are pilgrims. We prepare to light our prayer candle today. Um, I lift up again families and communities which are, have been affected by Fiona and by Ian. And I know that uh, 
Some people have uh, friends, family, even homes in Florida, and so I'm sure that there's been a lot of stress and worry. Um, also, friends and family on the East Coast, I certainly have lots there. And um, everybody's safe. Not everybody has power yet, so there's a little bit of stress. A couple of uh, extended family members have homes which probably are not repairable. So um, lots of things going on, lots of um, problems. But as I was mentioning in the, uh, the sermon, it's truly amazing to watch the power of the community and to see even in the midst of this kind of devastation to see hope reborn. So uh, um, important symbolism for us today as we celebrate worldwide communion. I also continue to lift up our indigenous siblings, acknowledging that Friday just passed was National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And so we still hang our Every Child Matters banner. And I also just wanted to lift up in a more general sense all of the vulnerable people in our communities and our country right now, um, so many people grappling with uh, issues around affordability of food and uh, housing. And uh, it's a, a really difficult time for many people. And sometimes we get in our own little bubble and we forget about that. So uh, we lift up and hopefully find ways to raise the voices of the vulnerable. So. Are we having a, have we talked about the food drive for next week? Okay, so you probably saw it in the announcements. So food drive for next week. Uh, focus for those of you who are able on cards. And uh, Eugenia has a list about that. We of course still accept food as well. But uh, just uh, take note of what's happening for the food drive for next week. And of course all those that you lift up in the silence of your hearts. Let us pray. Loving God who creates us anew each day, help us to discover your purpose for our lives and to seek our roles in fulfilling this purpose. We praise you for your creation of our lives day by day, for your recreation of hope within us, even when hope seems foolish. We pray for this world of ours in which cynical self-interest and grasping for power often seem to be the rules by which human beings live. We confess our responsibility for those thoughts and actions by which we further the powers of evil and destruction in our world. For we know that finally becoming human is a process of reconciliation and not separation, of trust and not suspicion of communion and not coercion. We accept your call to peacemaking wherever we may be and in whatever situation we find the hatreds, the fears, or the distrusts which cry out for peace to heal and to mend the brokenness. Help us each to offer you thanks, not in empty words or pious gestures, but in lives which are faithful to your call. Enable us to bear the fruits of thankfulness in serving others and in building community with all the people, young and old, in our lives. May we reach out to these persons, supporting them in their struggles and celebrating with them in their joys and victories. May we also expect the love and friendship offered to us by others as we confess and accept our needs, our weaknesses, our times of despair and hopelessness. We see your loving purpose in these expressions of human concern. We feel your loving touch, healing, and caring for us as a child cared for by a parent. Especially today, we reach out and touch our Christian siblings throughout the world who join us at this table. Bring peace where there is strife, hope where there is despair, and resilience in the face of challenges. And we open our arms to people of all faiths and no faiths who strive to build a better, more fair, and loving world in the face of countless challenges. We pray for our indigenous siblings. We remember the children who didn't come home and survivors and communities who were changed forever. We hold in our hearts our family on the East Coast, struggling in the aftermath of Fiona, and our family south of the border, devastated by Ian. 
We lift up in prayer to you our friends and family from this community and this congregation and all those we name in the silence of our hearts. We know that you are with us and for us in the midst of our lives. We praise you and give thanks for this constant love. Amen. With generations past and those yet to come and with people all around the world, we share our gifts and blessings. We honor all our gifts in prayer. Like a mustard seed, like a pinch of yeast, may our offerings work together for good. God, please take what we offer and give it to your world. Amen. Friends, through the ages, across the world, from father to daughter, from mother to son, from grandparents and great-grandparents to children of the community, we walk in a long line of the faithful, gathered around a table like us, gathered around a table of hope. Come, like all who have gone before, you are welcome at this table. Yeah. 
One world, spinning freely, yet too often fractured and confined. We too find ourselves broken, alone, feeling powerless. Remind us of the words written so long ago to Timothy, encouraging him to rekindle his faith. Spark your fire, O God, within us, the fire that energizes and renews and brings new life to us and to the world. As the Samaritan paused to give Jesus thanks, so we gather on this day people from around the world to celebrate Christ's presence in our midst. We use bread from our culture and from others as a potent symbol that you our God, are the God of all people, that your love reaches not only out to us, but others besides. Open us. Open us to listen to them. Open us to learn from them. Open us to be present for them, not in patronizing and colonial ways, but in loving, equal, and Christ-like ways. This day, we take communion with all the world. And in so doing, we declare that Christ is present for all people, challenging unjust systems with God's hope and promise. As we break bread and share a cup, may we remember the Christ present with us through all these years and across all the world present with us as we rededicate ourselves to you and as we raise our voices and proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As people gather at tables all around the world, we gather here at this table to remember. The night before he died, Jesus ate with his friends and he took a loaf. And after blessing it, he broke it, saying to them, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. That same night, he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink. This cup poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever you do this, remember me. Remembering Jesus' death and celebrating his resurrection, we await with hope his coming again to bring peace and justice to the earth. And we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here that we and these gifts touched by your Spirit may be signs of life and love to each other and to all the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. And let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for each one of us. The new covenant poured out for each one of us. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
in this space and in this age a reminder to you it's the clear peace first the body of Christ cup of the new covenant. Even in this place, we see how people reach out to one another with assistance. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world united in courage and peace rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us talents and tongues employ. into the world in love. Care for one another and for the earth. Seek justice. Make peace. Embrace hope. And the grace of Christ attend you. The Holy Spirit keep you and the love of God surround you this day and forever. Amen. <laughs> 